Today I'm going to walk us through addition and subtraction with negative integers and how we might want to teach that for conceptual understanding. Let's start with addition. We're going to think about when we first introduce addition, what does addition actually mean? I like to think of addition as combining. So, or grouping together. So for example, let's start with a pretty simple problem, six plus three. Both of our numbers are positive. We don't need to draw those positive signs, but it's probably good to remind ourselves of that. When we're young children, we probably introduce these using counters, but I could use integer coins specifically using the yellow side to represent positive numbers. And I can show six plus three, and I just put them all together and count how many total counters I see, and I see nine positive. I combine them to get a total. This can also be modeled on a number line. If I start at zero, I can first make a hop of six to show my first add end. So I added six, and then from there, that's the key, from there I'm going to combine with the next number and make another hop of three more, and I can see I still land at positive nine. Another way to show this is with that group model, like if I make some bar models. So I might have one bar and let's call that worth six. And then I'm gonna add them together with another bar. Let's say that is worth three. Um, and then all together, that total that I'm seeing at the top is nine. So if I had some cubes, I could stack those together. This is fairly easy to see when we have all positive numbers, but all three of these representations, we can build on this idea that addition means to combine. That's the concept. Um, I can now move on to some negative numbers. In this problem, I have six plus negative three, and I still want to think of addition as combining these numbers. Once I've introduced what a negative number means, that's important to do first. Thinking about negative numbers as numbers less than zero, um, as debts or something that we owe um, in moving in the opposite direction. Now we can start using two sides of our integer coins. So I can still model positive six, um, but now I'm going to model negative three and I'm still going to combine. And again, I'm seeing a prerequisite skill here. I need to understand zero pairs before I can move on to modeling with integer coins. That when we have one positive and one negative, they cancel each other out. So I can think of um, having a debt and repaying that debt. Um, so I can model those zero pairs by crossing one out. There's one zero pair, there's another zero pair, there's another zero pair as I'm combining them. Those are debts that are canceling each other out and now I'm left with positive three. If I was going to model this on a number line, I'm going to again start at my origin and I'm going to make a hop in the positive direction of six. And now I'm going to combine that. It's just the same as before. From there, I'm going to make a hop of negative three and negative hops move in the, towards the left. So there's my hop of negative three and I land at positive three as my final sum. Again, the concept hasn't changed though. I'm not telling them I'm subtracting three. That means something else. I'm combining because I'm adding. Another way that I might want to model this example is using that same bar model. The bar model looks a little bit tricky in this place. So last time we drew a bar that we said was worth positive six. Um, and then I drew next to it, again, from this end is where I drew my next, um, my positive three. So I connected them together. But in this case, it's kind of hard to connect them together. I, my, my bar is going to be in the opposite direction of them. So my bar would actually kind of back up this much and overlap that negative three back into that six so that my total ends up being this top part over here. So in the bar model for addition, it's a little bit trickier to show. Um, sometimes you might draw the bar at underneath it because we're moving backwards in that direction to draw a negative bar. Because again, we're always trying to add on from the end. We're trying to stack these pieces together to get our total and we'd be left with positive three up at that top. 
Um, I'm finding that the bar model is a little bit easier to show when we get to subtraction. And I can now use this same concept. Now that I'm not teaching a rule, I can think about the concept of combining to show in all three ways um, this the problem here, negative six plus negative three in this expression. So this time when I'm modeling, I'm going to model all negative numbers. And I'm just going to combine them together. There are no zero pairs this time. I'm just going to combine them together. And all together, I can see that I have nine negatives. Same thing on my number line. I'm gonna start with hops of negative six. And then from there, same concept, I'm going to move back three more. And I'm landing at negative nine. And if I was drawing my bar model, sometimes it's helpful to have like this like middle line over here so I know my first number is negative six and then from that end I'm going to draw negative three more and my total here ends up being negative nine. Again that bar model I don't know is the most effective for addition when we start inventing uh, negative numbers but the concept still holds. Um, uh, again we're, we're holding true to addition equals combining. Let's move on to some subtraction now. Before we get into any kind of rules, let's think to ourselves, what does subtraction mean? If I have two numbers, let's say I'm starting with six minus three this time, what does that actually mean? There are two kind of ways to think about subtraction. Early grades, we might think about subtraction as take away because some scenarios that we describe that would result in subtraction is like a change problem um, where you might have a starting amount and some something leaves or you spend some money and then you have an ending amount. So take away is one way to think of subtraction. Another way to think of subtraction is really by the, def, um, the answer in a subtraction problem and that's thinking about the difference between two numbers. I have explained the takeaway definition before in your learning lesson. So today I'm going to really focus on the difference model. I think it um, may show an even easier way to explain some of the um, subtraction concepts when you have negative numbers. Now with subtraction, we know that order matters, right? So sometimes early when we're working with students, if you have six minus three um, students, um, need to understand that, the, that the, you, it, the order that you put those numbers matters. That's a different problem than three minus six. Okay, so we always, usually when their kids are young, we tell them the big number goes on the top. Now that's not necessarily true, but that's usually how we set things up when they're younger. In reality, we should be thinking about subtraction being the difference from the subtrahend to the minuend from my second number that I'm writing, that order matters, from the subtrahend to the minuend. And if we always think of it that way, then it's going to apply all the way across when we use negative numbers. So if I am going to draw on the number line, all right, one thing I can do is I can plot my two numbers. There's my six, my minuend, and then there's my three, my subtrahend. And as I said, I want to know the difference from my subtrahend to my minuend, all right? And in this case, I had to move to the right or in the positive direction, three. So positive three is the difference between those two numbers. The bar model is especially effective in showing this. If I put my minuend up top and my subtrahend at the bottom, all right, these are both positive numbers. Here's a six and there's a three. I'm going to just darken the starting point. Notice how I lined up these bars. It's really important they're lined up or it's hard for me to measure the difference. This should look a lot like a bar graph. I want to measure from my subtrahend to my minuend and I want to know what that difference is. That's, this should look just like the compare model where we have a compare scenario. So when I do that, I would see that I would need to have a positive three there to make, to get from positive three to positive six. That difference is positive three. The way you explain this really matters and the sequencing of the problems that I put on here really matters because you can build on the same exact idea to work with negative numbers. Here we have 
6 minus negative 3. So this first number again is positive, and we're subtracting a negative. I want you to stop right here if your first reaction is to tell students to change that to a plus positive. That is a trick in math, and it is not rooted in the conceptual understanding. Don't jump to those tricks right away. Instead, let's talk about what subtraction means. Subtraction is finding the difference between two numbers. We could also use the takeaway method. We've done, I showed that in the learning lesson with integer coins, but in today I'm really gonna show it with the difference me method because I think it's a really helpful visual. So I am going to, um, I'm gonna use my number line first, uh, and I'm going to do the same thing I just did with the addition, uh, with the subtraction problem when they both were positive. So I'm going to make sure I remember it's the difference from my subtrahend to my minuend. So let's go ahead and plot them both on, on my number line. Here's my six, and there's my negative three. And I wanna know the difference from my subtrahend, this one's my subtrahend, my second number. Sometimes that um, subtrahend second number is helpful. So from the subtrahend, I want to move from there to my minuend. And I can see if I wanted to count that up, first of all, I moved in the positive direction to get from my subtrahend to my minuend. And I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, positive nine. That is why it effectively is mathematically equivalent to adding a positive, but it's not, uh, the, the meaning behind it is not just, we're, oh, it's becoming addition. It's the, I'm asking for the difference between these two numbers from the subtrahend to the minuend. Using a bar model, again, once we're dealing with negative numbers, I like to put the, my middlemost bar in that same way. So if I had um, positive six, I put my minuend up top, and I put my subtrahend underneath it. Now this time, my bar would not go to the right. My bar's gotta go back this way because it's a negative three if I was drawing the lengths of this. And again, I want to know the difference from the end of my subtrahend to the beginning, the end of my minuend. And it would take, if you notice the direction that I, that I had to move from subtrahend to minuend, that would take me nine to get from the end to the end. So it's that same concept that I can think of it as bars or stacked cubes or on that number line. Just because subtraction can be a little trickier, I will do all four problem types here using that same understanding. That subtraction means to find the difference. That's what it means to find the difference from my subtrahend to my minuend. So I'm going to plot them both on my number line. And sometimes um, if I'm thinking like Savannah, she might get a little bit confused when she sees the subtraction sign. It helps if I'm noting that this first one is a, is a negative sign and that, uh, or if I even color code that, I can color code it red, negative six minus, and this is actually a positive three over here because it does not tell me, um, it, because it's not indicated there, um, that that's a positive number. So I have negative six minus positive three. Let's go ahead and plot both numbers on my number line. Here's negative six and here's positive three. But the direction and the order in which our numbers are presented in our in subtraction matters. I have to go from the subtrahend to the minuend. So here's my subtrahend. I'm gonna go from my subtrahend to my minuend. And this time you notice I moved in the negative direction. So my difference is negative nine. If I was going to draw them here, my first bar is to the left and it is negative six. That's my minuend and my sub subtrahend is a positive number, it is positive three, and I wanna know the difference from my end of my uh, subtrahend to the end of my minuend. In this case, I moved in the negative direction to the left. Um, that's another prereq, hopefully you're noticing that, that we wanna think about negative, oops, negative to the left and positive to the right for the directions that we're moving. Let's do one final example. Here's negative six minus negative three. And let's go through this together again. I can do my number line and plot them both on my number line. So I've got a negative six 
and I've got a negative three. Those are my two, um, my minuend subtrahend. It helps when I label my subtrahend. That's the second number. Here's my subtrahend. And I want to know the difference from my subtrahend to my minuend, which is negative three. One final note about teaching conceptually, a really powerful way to do that is to show two examples side by side to compare and contrast, show similarities and differences. If your students don't seem to be grasping that the order matters, I think if you take two very similar problems, I'm showing them with positive numbers first, but you could do a similar thing with where one or both of them are negative numbers, um, and you put them next to each other. You can give the students a chance to talk about what's different about these. If I were, these are right now listed as expressions, but if I could also make them into equations if I want to by adding that equal sign. And I wanted to know how would X be different in each of these two problems? Give them a chance to talk through it and see if they're uh, noticing what's different about it. Now I can show them that order really matters. If I want to know what this first problem means, the first problem again, I have a positive six and a positive three. So six and three, and I want to know the difference from the three to the six. And in this second scenario, my first number is, um, I'm going to draw that here, positive three. And my second number is, my, my subtrahend is positive six. And I want to know the difference from my subtrahend to my minuend. That's a really clear way of seeing the difference in this second example is negative three, and the difference in the first example is positive three. So sometimes just putting two very similar problems next to each other and having students explain or you walking them through explaining why they are different and that order matters is a really nice way to teach this concept. So um, in sum, avoid all the tricks with when you're doing subtraction with negative numbers. Really think about how you can, you can root your explanations and your think alouds in what those operations mean. Addition meaning to combine, and subtraction meaning to find the difference or to take away. And the takeaway is a little bit more complicated to model. I, I did show that with the integer coins, but that takeaway method still works as well. We just need to use more of those zero pairs.